Okay, 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 okay. Oh, shit! <laughs> Alright, I just got back from my morning show sa radio. And I was... So many things were, were running through my head the whole ride home. Uh, I just wanted to get on in front of the camera and I wanted to talk about this. This is um, league changing. This is literally league changing. The whole landscape of the league will change because of this trade. Guys, I'll show you in a few minutes. It's fast, fast, fast. For those who are not I don't know what you've been doing. Hit that subscribe button. The name is Mike Reyes. Back on my channel, you already know. And I appreciate all of you. Man. You know what's what's nakakatawa ng puso is sobrang daming nag-message sa akin. Wait lang, wait lang. Sobrang daming nag-message sa akin, sobrang daming nag-send sa akin nung trade asking for, you know, my reaction to it. Sobrang nakakatawa ng puso yun. Even players, man, they're asking me like, who do you think won the trade? What do you think? Ganyan, ganyan. Parang feeling ko lang naniniwala naman kayo sa mga sinasabi ko, puro kalokohan lang naman 'to. 'Di ba? Doon sa mga nag-invalidate sa alam ko sa basketball. Yo, chill. Wait, sa mga you see, I told you, my messages won't stop beeping. My messages won't stop popping because of this trade. So, nagkakagulo. Alright. Let's talk about this. Alright, let's talk about this real quick. So, let's talk about this trade. Okay, this massive Calvin Abueva for Chris Banchero and two draft picks. Alright, between Phoenix and Magnolia. Okay, ito muna, I'm just get this out the way. Alright, I believe, ako lang to, deep in my heart, this wasn't a Coach Topex Robinson decision. This wasn't a coaching choice. Because, alam nyo naman, nabata ni Coach Topex, or anak ni Coach Topex, si Calvin Abueva. And Coach Topex has been waiting so long to finally get Calvin Abueva back. Even when he was with Coach Louis Alas, sobrang iniintay nila yan. And when Calvin was back, you saw how emotional Coach Topex was in terms of like Calvin's return. So, I know na hindi to, uh, I have no sources, but I know na anak ni Coach Topex Robinson, si Calvin Abueva. So, I doubt that this is a coaching choice. I believe this was behind, this was a management choice, this was whatever. Also, on this channel, guys, dun sa mga bago, hindi to alam, or kailangan paalalahanin, I don't look into the business stuff. I don't look into the farm team allegations. I don't look into the blah, blah, blah. I don't look at the contract. I don't look at the extracurricular shit na nangyayari outside of the basketball court. All I do is talk about the basketball side of things. Yun lang. I'm a basketball analyst. Hindi ako tabloid. Alright? Hindi ako tanga. Alam ko naman na may mangyayari, may mga nangyayari behind the scenes. But that's just not my vibe. Alright? That's not my wave. Alright? So, basketball-wise, I just know that Coach Topex Robinson would have loved to continue to coach Calvin Abueva. And I know na alam ni Coach Topex yung value ni Calvin Abueva sa team niya. Especially with the kind of culture na dinadala ni Coach Topex uh, sa Phoenix. That San Sebastian Lyceum culture na, you know, mga, kumbaga, tough, toughness, mga rugged, alright? Yun yung dinadala ni Coach Topex. He's the pitbull. So, alam mo na yun yung brand of basketball na gusto niya. So, I know this wasn't a coaching uh, choice. This wasn't a coaching decision. Alright? Now, on to the basketball side of things. You would be surprised how, or maybe you would disagree with me when I say that this was actually a win for both teams. It, it's a win, guys. It's a win. I know you're all gonna hate me and say, Whoa, that's Calvin Abueva. Why would you trade away a Calvin Abueva? Uh, just listen to me, ah. Listen to me. First, let's talk about Magnolia. Alright. Actually, ito yung mas madali. Kasi you just got a Calvin Abueva. Alright. Yes, you got rid of Chris Banchero, who is uh, a solid stud. Or is a stud in the league. Alright. He is, kumbaga, reliable on both ends. Marketing din, kasi alam mo naman, magkamukha kami. Pero, <laughs> alright, I needed to add that lang. I'm just joking. Alright, pero, if you think about it, when you talk about Magnolia, they just have a, they just have too many guards. Yun lang yun. They have too many guards. And, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was waiting for them to trade one of them. And, looking at their lineup, alright, looking at their lineup of guards or their security agency, Paul Lee, Mark Barroca, Gio Halalon, Chris Banchero, and Justin Melton, alright? When you look at those five, no way are they gonna trade Mark Barroca. Like, ano na yun eh? Ilang championship na yun sa Magnoli, even during the James Yap, uh, even during the James Yap, Mark Pingris days, and PJ Simon, ilang championship na si Mark Barroca. So, you know, they're just not gonna trade Mark Barroca. Yung ganun, ganun lang, no way. And he just signed the big deal na ilang-ilang taon na naman ata siya nakapirma. No way are you gonna trade the Paul Lee. I mean, come on. That's the lethal weapon. No way, no way. Let's not even go there. Alright, so no way are they gonna trade a Paul Lee. They're not gonna trade a Mark Barroca. Gio Halalon and Chris Banchero. Yung dalawa, I felt na baka pwede nilang i-trade if they choose to, you know, release 
some of their guards or a guard para kumonte i was thinking chris panchero or gio halalon talaga because they're both solid guards i would say justin melton also pero ito ah Justin Melton wouldn't have the same trade value as a Gio Halalon or a Chris Banchero. You get what I'm saying? If you want a stud, a solid guy, you need to trade a solid guy. I'm not saying Justin Melton isn't a solid guy, but I'm saying is what I'm saying is trade value wise, mas matas yung trade value ni Chris Banchero, chaka ni Gio Halalon compared to Justin Melton. So you have the space to really trade one of these one of these players. Kasi merong ganang mga Mark Baroka, Paul Lee, and then who's gonna who's gonna be left behind, which is Gio Halalon, and then Justin Melton. You still have a solid guard rotation. Talking about Magnolia. So I was thinking they'd get rid of one of those guys, and they did. Chris Banchero. Okay. Now looking at Magnolia's lineup for the longest time since James Yap left. All right, they never had a solid three man, a three, okay? Because Rome de la Rosa is no disrespect to Rome de la Rosa, but you still don't have a superstar at that three spot. Minsan nga pinasinasabi sa akin ng poli, siya na inagte tres, eh. kasi nagahalalon, baroka, li na sila dun sa lineup. I mean that's solid, that's solid, that's a small, that's a small lineup that will you know create havoc on the court, but. If you can put in a solid three guy, na talagang superstar yung three mo, that would be great, man. And then Rome De La Rosa will come off the bench to, you know, to provide that spark and that energy na kailangan nila in the second quarter or end of the first, de ba? So I was already thinking na whether you believe me or not, they would if they did get rid of a guard, kasi ang dami nga nilang guardia, they'd get a three. Kasi yung four nila, de ba? Jackson Corpus, Aris Junisio, Mark Pingres is I'm not sure if he's still gonna play. Rafi Rivas, I'm not sure. Ian Sang galang nandun naman, di ba? And also, Calvin Abueva not only can pay, can play three, but he can also play four. So, can you imagine a small lineup of Halalon, Baroka, Polly, Calvin Abueva, and then Ian Sanggalang? That would be crazy. So now they have the luxury of putting either Calvin on the three, pag gagamitin mo sa four si Junisio, o kaya Rafi Rivas is not gonna retire yet, di ba? Or siguro si Jackson Corpus lalagay mo sa four, or you can go small by putting Calvin Abueva at the four. It's a great, great trade for Magnolia, not just because, oh, you got Calvin Abueva. No, for positioning purposes, and because you have a surplus of guards, you really can trade one of them and get a solid 3-4 guy. Diba? Kaya nga sinasabi natin nung mock draft is, ang bibigay ko sa Pure Foods was Leonard Santillan eh. Kasi, 4 eh. Na, sometimes, kung gusto mo, magti-3 siya, pero solid 4 guy. Yun naman talaga yung butas ng Magnolia eh. 3 and 4. Okay? Now, Calvin Abueva is gonna, is just gonna be perfect. For Magnolia. Like, Chito Victolero, the ruggedness, the toughness, intimidation factor of the Magnolia Hotshots is, you know, the defense, the pressure, yung banggaan, yung pisikalan. Just perfect! Calvin Abueva to Magnolia. Can you imagine yung depensa nila with Gio Halalon at the 1, Mark Barok at the 2, Pauli at the 3 who is an underrated defender. Don't give me that bullshit. Underrated defender. Nakikita nyo lang kasi sobrang galing umupense. But Pauli is an underrated defender. And then you have a Calvin Abueva and then an Ian Sangalang to anchor the paint. Tapos off the bench, Rome De La Rosa, uh, Jackson Corpus, Aris Junisio, Justin Melton who also pressures the basketball. Like, Man, a defensive lineup. First first five to second five, all the way to the bench. Just really pure defense. Okay? Pure defense. Like, no one there is soft. All of them are gonna compete. All of them are gonna fucking intimidate you. So, just a perfect match if you talk about Calvin Abueva to the Magnolia Hotshots, man. Like, wala ako masabi. It was a perfect trade for them. Yes, they got rid of their sixth pick. But... Like what we were saying, for number six naman, they were supposed to get a four or a three. Somewhere there. You know, that 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 position. They were supposed to get a four and a three. So you traded away your sixth pick, who would have been a solid rookie, for a bona fide superstar in Calvin Abueva. Like, just a perfect trade for Magnolia, man. Wala ako masabi. Like, I think it's easy to see or it's easy to defend yung ginawa ng Magnolia. Wala tayong kailangan sabihin. No? Just a perfect trade for them and just a match made in heaven. The Pinatubo duo. Ngayon, Pinatubo duo na lang, di ba? Shout out Ronald Pascual, man. Hopefully, you're doing well. Pero right now, man, like the reunion of Calvin Abueva and Ian Sangalang, Pinatubo duo, and then you put in a Paul Lee who was a, obviously a Gilas teammate of Calvin Abueva, the same as Mark Baroka and Gio Halalon. Like, damn! I just can't wait. I'm sure all Magnolia fans are excited and gonna, like, nabuhayan 
na biglang championship team na ulit. Di ba nag-struggle nung bubble yung Magnolia, sabi nga ni Pauli. Ngayon, man, they, they suddenly just became a ca- championship contender. Again, itong Magnolia Hotshots. I'm just really, really excited for them, man. And that was a great trade. That was really a great trade. Sobra ka sa point guard. Kulang ka sa 4. Kukuha ka sa draft. Di, kumuha ka na ng superstar. Trade mo na yung isang point guard mo. Chris Panchero, that's not... Kumbaga, that's not just a, just a point guard. No, solid si Chris Panchero, man. So that was really a good trade. And, you know, I'm just excited for Magnolia, man. I'm sure y'all are happy, man, Magnolia fans. Let's move on to the other side, the Phoenix Fuel Masters, okay? Y'all are gonna disagree when I say this, but I'm gonna try to justify why this can be or why there's silver lining in this trade for the Phoenix Fuel Masters. Like... I, I, I disagree kasi solid masyado si Calvin Abueva to release. But I'm try to justify kung bakit nila ginawa yun. Hindi ko pag-uusapan yung kontrata niya. Hindi ko pag-uusapan yung mga sinasabi na hindi niya mabayaran yung kontrata ni, ni Calvin Abueva or yung mga extracurricular off the court um, ek-ek ni Calvin Abueva na baka hindi kinaya ng Phoenix. Like, I'm not gonna talk about that shit kasi that's not basketball. Those are chismis lang yung mga yun. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about like on a basketball perspective why this trade can be good for Phoenix. Okay? fair trade to sa akin. Kasi, ito ah, looking at mag, uh, at Phoenix naman, when you look at their lineup, guys, they have a solid point guard rotation in RJ Hazul, RR Garcia, who, kumbaga, bumalik na yung laro, RR Garcia, and then you have a Brian Heruela and a Mike Gamboa. Okay, that's their point guard rotation. Okay? Their threes, they had a Calvin Abueva, a Jansen Rios, and maybe a Napoles. Diba? But, you think of this, when you talk about the Phoenix Fuel Masters, wala silang point guard na sabihin mong nandun sa level na kayang sumabay dun sa mga talagang superstar point guards in the league. No disrespect to RR Garcia and RJ Hazul, man. Like, they're solid point guards. But you get what I'm saying, di ba? You need a guy who can play both ends. RR Garcia and RJ Hazul are not known for their defense. I'm not saying they can't play defense, okay? No disrespect to these two guys. Idol ko tong dalawang to, promise. Pero like, Chris Banchero will bring in a different a different game or a different kumbaga yung priority niya is really the defensive end he's a lot more aggressive than RR Garcia and and RJ Azul RR Garcia and RJ Azul are more of outside scorers three points mid-range floaters Chris Panchero goes all the way to the rim man Chris Panchero is freakishly athletic for a point guard he may not be a pure point guard like RR and RJ but yun nga like he's a converted point guard who can really score attack play deep Diba? Aggressive energy. Yun yung wala yung dalawa. Kasi chill si RR tsaka si RJ. Diba? Cool lang sila eh. They're very like super vets. Na cool. Diba? IQ. Isip-isip lang. Chris Panchera adds a different dynamic to the Phoenix Fuel Masters. Okay? Now, Check this out. Okay yun. Okay yung trade. When you talk about the point guards, you add a Chris Banchero there. Sobrang solid yun. They would need someone like Chris Banchero. Chris Banchero low-key plays like Calvin Abueva. Yung aggressive. I, I'm not saying they're as good as each other. Pero aggressive, depensa, walang katakot-takot. Akala mo nga hindi pogi maglaro. Hindi pogi itong si Chris Banchero kung makipagpalitan ng muka eh. Like, trust me. If you really watch how Chris Banchero plays, hindi siya takot makipagpalitan ng muka. Hindi siya takot makipagpalitan ng muka, guys. I don't know why hindi ka takot, Chris. Because lugi ka kung makipagpalitan ka with any player or any person in the whole country. Lugi ka, bro. Lugi ka. But, ganun siya maglaro eh. He has a Calvin Abueva vibe in him na talagang he's really gonna go at you especially on the defense event. Oh, so, good yun. Now, they lose at their three. They're starting forward. Kasi, starters naman yan would be RJ Hazul. Uh, I'm not really sure pero I would assume RJ Hazul, Matthew Wright, Calvin Abueva at the three, Jason Perkins at the four, and then Justin Chu at the five. They lose their three. Calvin Abueva, which is a big, obviously a big void to fill. Now, when you look at their three, maybe Jansen Rios is there and Napoles nga. Okay? But, they get the sixth pick. The sixth pick of one of the deepest drafts in a while, okay? Now, you look at this draft, okay? Yung mock draft natin, balikan natin yung mock draft natin. Ha. Obviously, Monzon is gonna go one. Malonzo, for sure, hindi aabot sa sixth pick. At the three, big man ang kukuni ni Coach Yeng, Giao sa Enlex. So, take away that pick also, hindi affected doon ng Phoenix. At the four, sabi ni Coach Yeng, Giao, kukuni nila yung best available talent. And I still feel, or I still believe that's Calvin of Tana. Calvin of Tana number four. Yun ang talagang, in, lang 99% sure ako Calvin of Tana yun. Yung 1%, kung mag Alvin pa sa all sila. Pero like, sobrang long shot yun na mag Alvin pa sa all at number 4 ang NLEX if they could get a, Cal- a Calvin of Tana. At 5, Rain or Shine yung pipik. Okay, and Rain or Shine is probably gonna get kung sino yung hindi kinuha ng, ano, ng NLEX, which is either pa sa all or of Tana. Okay, so yun yung number 5. At number 6, guys, dito, ito yung mangyayari dyan. The Phoenix Fuel Masters should just 
pray that the Phil Ams fix their papers. Because if they fix their papers, you can get a Taylor Statham at number six, which is at a three. Like in the league, he can he can dominate the three spot in the league. Not really dominate, siguro like shana agad, but he's gonna be a solid three in the league. This guy is PBA ready, people. This guy's PBA. He's been PBA ready. So if you can get a Taylor Statham at that sixth pick, then he's he's no Calvin Abueva, but yo like potential. Looking, looking forward into the future, Taylor Statham is gonna be a stud, okay? Jeremiah Gray, maybe? Mikey Williams, pwedeng Mikey Williams, pwedeng Mikey Williams lalagay mo sa dos, tapos lalagay mo sa tres si, si Matthew Wright. Y'all can imagine, like, the Splash Brothers, Williams, and Wright. Like, yun nga lang, sana na lang, may makakaayos ng papers dito. Like, Statham or Mikey Williams would be great. If Alvin Pasaol slides down to the 6, isa pa yun. I don't think maabutan nila si Calvin of Tana talaga. But pwede yung Alvin Pasaol. Pwede yung Mikey Williams. Pwede yung Taylor Statham. Like, they, they're they gonna get a solid 3-man at uh, at number 6. I can, I can, ano, kumbaga, I can assure or I can, I really believe they can get a, a solid wing at number 6. Especially with how the, deep the draft is. So if you think about it, okay, oh na, nawala na si Calvin Abueva. Malaking bagay yun. Oo na. But, if you have a Chris Panchero at the 1, and then backed up by RJ Hazul and R.R. Garcia, and then you got a Matthew Wright at the 2, and then imagine if you get a Taylor Statham or Mikey Williams to play alongside Matthew Wright, okay, or an Alvin Pasaol kung talagang umabot, diba? Then you got a Perkins at the 4, Justin Chu at the 5. Call me crazy, but if you didn't know that they just let go of Calvin Abueva, and don't you don't look at that as, pero nawala si Calvin Abueva, no? And you look at the lineup lang, like wala kang alam, yun yung lineup. Come on. And then the coaching of Coach Topex Robinson. Come on. Yun yung silver lining dun sa nangyari sa Phoenix Fuel Masters. Yes, it hurts to let go of a Calvin of Abueva. But if you look at the bigger picture, it can actually work. It can actually work. It doesn't hurt talaga. Me as a fan, I'm excited to see Calvin Abueva with Magnolia. And I'm excited to see paano didiscard yan ng Phoenix, yung sixth pick nila. How they're gonna get out of it. Are they gonna trade it for another three man? Or are they gonna use it to pick someone na talagang yun yung gagawin nilang, yun yung igugroom nila to be their starting forward or their starting wing alongside Matthew Wright, man. Like, the the, the options are endless. The the, op, the it, It's gonna be a crazy draft. So, yeah, for Phoenix, man, Masakit, pero um, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. If, if that's what you're doing, then I see what you're doing. So it's all good. It's all good. Good luck to both teams, man. And I'm just happy that we have this kind of news diba? as early as this morning. Sobrang, sobrang solid, man. Sobrang solid. I'm really excited, but yeah, there you have it, guys. I got a long list of interviews to happen in the next few days. Um, This is our quick ISO schedule. I'm just really trying as much content as I as I as I can to give you a chat to give you guys a chance to get to know our players a lot more. All right, so this is Mike Reyes, man. I'm di ko na end to alam nyo na lahat yan. This has been Mike Reyes. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Peace and love, and I'm gonna see y'all later for our mock draft. All right.